sometimes understanding what the Bible says takes some work. It takes some digging in. We like to make it easy, pretend it's easy sometimes, and just take the surface meaning. And when we do, we sometimes miss what's actually being said, misunderstand, or completely block out what's actually going on. I've been doing a lot of series about looking at the historical background, the cultural background, the ways that we're different. We want to read it as 21st century Americans and then lay on to what we want to believe. And all too often, it misses it. Um, one of the things that's been going on is another nice little uh, uptick of the women can't be in ministry. Women have to be subservient to men. Okay, if you hold to that view, please go back and look at my other video about it. <laughs> and I actually had a couple people going, oh no, he's talking about historical context again. How dare him? It's right on the surface. Well, yeah, you bet I'm talking about historical context. And whether you like it or not, you use it at times. If you're not using historical context, then um, how many of you are going around picking up snakes and letting them bite you? Yes, there is a group of people that does that because they're not looking at context. Uh, there are plenty of other instances where people don't look at context. Uh, or here's a good one. If you've ever gotten into the disputes with some people over tattoos, and they usually, they'll quote Leviticus 19, and you know, see no tattoos, and then they ignore the rest of the passage that talks about cutting your hair, <laughs> your sideburns, uh, because they want to use context for some and not for others. You've got to use context. The truth is, the Bible was written to a group of people two and three thousand years ago in a different culture. And if you're refusing to look at the historical context, the language, the culture that it was written to, you're not going to understand parts of it. And yes, it takes work. There's a good reason why in 2 Timothy 2 that Paul actually writes, Do your best to present yourself as one to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed rightly handling the word of truth. Uh, there's actually some translations that will say, study to show yourself approved so that you can understand. Um, and that way you can avoid irrelevant babble for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness. Okay. And you need to understand. You need to dig in. The truth is most of these people that are doing the arguments saying no context, aren't Jewish, have no understanding of Jewishness, and so they don't even understand the Jewish background of it. Um, and yeah, they'll miss a number of things. Yes, it takes work. Yes, it takes digging. Uh, and sometimes it's hard work to figure out what's going on. When I had somebody the other day approach me at work and wanted to get into this huge long story about the Nephilim and who they were and what they were and are they still around today and how cool is it and what is all this and, I, and I'm guessing they're going there's one passage that mentions them and most of the context of it is gone you can't build up anything around this whole deal because we don't know but they were willing to build up this whole doctrine of who the Nephilim were and how they relate to us today and I'm going <sighs> context. Context will keep you from getting into some weird beliefs. I mean, there's churches out there that teach some odd things, um, and the context of it will help keep you from that. When we read the Beatitudes, for example, there's a lot of historical context there that if we don't understand, we miss what is going on. Uh, and we un misunderstand what Jesus is actually saying. Jesus is speaking to a Jewish people about who he is as Messiah and what his teachings are to bring them back to the Torah. We sometimes want to say, Jesus is coming to start a new religion. He really wasn't. He was calling them back to what really true Judaism is, the true faith that's spelled out in the Torah. And when you look at his Sermon on the Mount, Lots of it comes straight out of what we call, in uh, Protestant circles, the Pentateuch. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the Torah, the Jewish core of the law. That's where his teachings come from. We love to hold on to, you know, do unto others as you would have them do to you. That's in the Torah. It's Deuteronomy. We look at the love your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. That's Deuteronomy. It's part of the Shema, which is, you know, Jewish at its core. 
Jesus keeps calling people back to that, to obedience, to service, to love. It's very Jewish. But if you miss that, uh, you won't understand what's going on. That's why we have to dig in. That's one of the reasons I've got all of this back here is because sometimes what we think is on the surface isn't. Every single one of Paul's letters in the New Testament, Ephesians, Philippians, Corinthians, uh, every single one of them is written to a specific church and specific issues. And if you don't understand the culture of the city, uh, what's going on, how secular it is, what Roman and Greek gods they worshipped, and how that affected their society, and what was going on in the church, you will misunderstand what Paul is saying in those letters. There's one letter that it looks like Paul is condemning Apollos, where if you read just the surface and glance over it, you kind of go, oh, wow, Paul is saying that Apollos isn't somebody you should be listening to. And then in another book, he sits there and talks about what a great apostle Apollos is. Wait, is Paul, you know, disagreeing with himself? No. Context tells you. The book of uh, Gospel according to John, when we read that the Jews were the ones who crucified Jesus. What, so all the Jewish people did? No. Context tells you it was just the Jewish leadership. Context and historical background is what fills in that picture especially when we are so separated by time and culture and distance. Yes, it takes some work. Yes, it takes some digging. Uh, study Bibles are great because they will help provide all those wonderful notes that can help explain some of the context. Um, I have several of them I absolutely love. The Fire Bible is my personal favorite, uh, but there's a number of very good study Bibles out there that will kind of help fill in some of that context, some of that background, some of that stuff that you don't get. And then if you go really nuts like me, you start picking up the commentaries. And, and yes, I actually read them page by page. I'm weird. Um, and, uh, a number of things like that. Uh, but take some time. Study. Look into what you might be missing. Uh, if you've got a study Bible, read those introductions because they'll help give you some background and help you understand what's going on. Uh, the other thing I would encourage you, even if you pick up a study Bible, look at who the editors are, who the ones that are writing the notes. Because we try to not be biased, but let's be honest, everybody has biases. And so you want to know where those are coming from. Uh, there's a couple really good study Bibles out there that I like for the most part, but there's a couple spots where their theological bias just slams you upside the head and you can go, ah, no. Give me just the background. <laughs> Let me make the decision. Um, but I can't encourage you enough. Study. Look at the cultural background context. And if you're one of these people that says, oh, you got to use context to prove your point. Uh, yep. Absolutely. Because if you're not looking into the context of the scripture, if you're not looking into that, you're missing what's going on. And if you refuse to look at it because you're afraid that it may challenge your beliefs, may challenge your standards, and may actually show something new, I pray that you get a little courage up. Because there's nothing to be afraid of in looking at the historical background and the full context of a verse. It may cause you to change, and sometimes that's a little scary. But don't we really want what's actually true? The real truth? Shouldn't we be open to learning if something that we believe is wrong? Well, context will do that. I encourage you, dig in, study, learn, challenge yourself. You'll grow closer and you'll realize what an amazing, incredible God we have. Because the more you learn about the context, the more incredible he becomes. Thanks so much. God bless.